Admiral's Log, July 4th, 1914. It is July 1914, and our new doctrine under my command is showing real results. The deployment of our submarines across strategic locations has started to pay off, big time. We're not just making waves, we're changing the game. Both Austria, Hungary, and Italy are feeling the heat, with their navies and merchant fleets under constant pressure from our subs. These victories are not just about sinking ships, they're boosting the reputation of our Soviet Navy like never before. We're showing the world what we're capable of, and this is opening new doors for us. Orders for shipbuilding are coming in from other nations, recognizing our expertise and the effectiveness of our naval strategies. The success of the submarines has proven the doubters wrong and shown the value of adapting to new tactics and technologies. We're not just sticking to the old ways. We're leading the charge in naval warfare. Our crews, especially those manning the submarines, have adapted brilliantly, mastering these new vessels and tactics with skill and courage. This is a proud moment for our Navy. We're not only defending our waters and interests, but also setting a standard on the global stage. Our focus on flexibility and innovation is making us a force to be reckoned with. We'll keep pushing forward, using our submarines to maintain pressure on our enemies and to protect our nation. This is just the beginning. With our growing prestige and expanding capabilities, the Soviet Navy is poised for even greater achievements. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 18. This episode, we are at peace with Austria-Hungary. Um, I've said this before, however, the situation can very quickly change when it comes to Austria-Hungary. When these guys get some sort of itch or the season changes, I don't know what it is, they decide, well, enough is enough, and they just immediately go to war right again. But for now, it's peacetime. Now, the situation is such that, unfortunately, I don't have enough money, slash, I don't have enough uh, repair score to get Serbia from them. So, we're just going to take 700 million. I don't need any of their most likely crappy ships. But hey, I got a 1.3 billion dollar funding now, which is very nice. Before we signed this piece, however, um, what? No, we're not. Before we signed this peace, unfortunately, I lost Eastern Poland. Austria-Hungary took this, I, however, took back this. And that did stabilize the income for the Navy a bit, but, well, not much more than that. Today, however, we don't turn our attention to the Austro-Hungarians, because I don't have to anymore. We're going to turn our attention to Tripolitana, which is defended by a very small army force of 4,761. What they have found off of their shore is a couple of the invasion class ships. Two Petrovs, they have the Apostle Piotr, and they have the Europa herself. So these boys are in for a treat. Naval invasion, Tripolitana, and what, I need how much? <laughs> I need 17,000. Yeah, no, we're way past that. We are way past that. Naval budget, or rather naval funding, I should say, at the moment, is kind of okay at 210. Um, if you compare, however, my naval budget to everybody else's, it is tiny. Austria-Hungary has about, <laughs> about six times what I have, and I just keep kicking them into the dirt. Um, <clears throat> I haven't seen the Spanish in a long time. Their naval budget at least is smaller than mine, but then again, their economy has ground completely to a halt. Italy is not doing very poorly, although they don't have a whole lot of friends. Uh, they're at war with the British, with myself, with the Americans, and with the Chinese. So, yeah, the Italians aren't doing too hot. They don't have a whole lot of ships left either. Um, Germany, very, very nice. 20 million, 7.5 million for China. Sorry, billion. Um, 11.6 billion for the Japanese, 16 billion for the French, the, Jap the Americans at 17, and of course the British at 71. No, that's not a typo. 71 billion dollars goes to their navy. Which, well, you can see they have 15 battleships. This is a very, very, very favorable friendship to have. Um, I'm their only friend. I'm their only alliance. I don't know how long it's going to last, but uh, long may it last, I hope. 
Research-wise, I am not really prioritizing anything at the moment. I just want everything to progress. And considering that I have a bit of money to burn, I might just go and burn some. Because with, um, what was it, about, I think, 30% research rate, rangefinder is going to take 33 months, for example, and now it's going to take 7. I am, however, spending about 5 times as much. So let's say I want to do about 80%. And I would be broke in uh, 13 months, but I am building and then promptly selling a whole bunch of ships for other nations. So all of these ships that you see here, they're the ones that are going to go to other nations. Uh, the DDs aren't particularly expensive, but for example, another Petrov is making me a very decent profit. Uh, they want another Comrade Cat, they want another Europa class. It's all good. I'll build it and you guys can pay for it. As for the rest of the Navy over in the other side, the Asian theater. Um, oh, this is the German side, this is the Baltics. I've multiple the Ravel. I have multiple the uh, Yarkov because I don't need her at the moment. And that saves me a ton of money. Despite mothballing though, the Yarkov is still 3 million a month. Just sitting there, 3 million a month. There's no crew on her, there's nothing there. As for the rest of the ships in the Baltic, for example, I can just put these into in being. Uh, that would save me potentially a decent chunk of money. And, <clears throat> well, that seems to be the name of the game with the Soviets. Save your money, because otherwise you will find that you have nothing left. So, in being, I don't need to seek control against the Germans right now. Um, what else do we got? We got the Black Sea, we got the Sea of Japan. All of these guys... If they aren't already in being, they're going to be in being right now. So they just exist, basically. Uh, they don't do much beyond that. So that did save me a bit of money, but not that much. I'm very focused on rebuilding transport capacity. And seeing as I, at least for the moment, don't seem to have a ton of enemies which are hunting down my transports, I should be able to make some progress. I also want to make more progress on the submarines, but while well, everything needs a bit of touch and attention over here in the hull designs, so getting new hulls, getting the Navy a bit more gear would be much appreciated. Now let's see how this naval invasion is going to pan out. I think that we have a bit more than the tonnage that we need. Um, seeing as we have like what, 120,000 tons parked off their shore in Tripoli. So I think invading this Tripolitana should be pretty quick. I'm not sure how well it's going to go if at some point we're going to go to war with the French. But <clears throat> so far, I haven't been at war with the French ever. And I'm not really planning on it. Because the French have, like you've seen, a very powerful budget. Or a very powerful navy. Thanks to a very sizable budget. They're also pretty advanced, I think. As compared to mine. But yeah. Um, not really a party that you want to tango with. However, I do have the Brits on my side. <clears throat> I do have the Brits on my side. I can now build battlecruisers, which is nice. Italy just continues losing transports. And we are launching a naval invasion into Tripolitana. Um, I have lost a bunch more soldiers there. No, you're not getting the Yakov. Look at that. 39% chance to succeed with the naval invasion. I like this. It's a, a bit of... How shall I say? Um, <clears throat> I'm harassing the Italians at every turn. They're getting harassed by everybody else, I think. Yeah. Everybody else is funding the Italians. If at all possible, I will take territory from them. But I think I need a lot more firepower in order to do that. I need a lot more tonnage if I want to take Western or Eastern Sicily, for example. And beyond this, the Italians also have uh, over here Ethiopia. But the Brits are trying to make progress from either side. Uh, unsuccessfully so you got Somali land over here could be another nice target because it gives me a base in the Arabian Sea but that works two ways it works as a resupply post but I will also have to protect transport ships going here yay um, I don't have a whole lot of those anyway a whole lot of protection ships so getting even more ships out there is not something I really want to do now, seeing as I now have access to the new uh, battlecruiser design, I want to also try and get some better guns and rangefinders and stuff. I can design one right now and just get it out there, but I'm not sure if I need to. 
nor if it lines up with the initiative of the Admiral. Uh, because, like I said before, the, the Admiral's focused much, much more on small ships. We need to be a bit more numerous rather than we need to be advanced. If we can be both, fantastic. But being both is very expensive. Because not only will you have to field a lot of ships, but also you're going to have to pay for all the advanced gear on those ships. And that becomes an expensive uh, hobby to entertain in the form of both being able to just keep those ships out there. Like, you're going to have to get a lot of ships, which means maintenance is high, and if you then put uh, high-tech gear on them, it gets worse. <clears throat> there's dreadnoughts, there's more submarine attack power. The Italians keep losing transports everywhere. Uh, I'm not sure why the US wants to pony up to me, but okay. No. Well, Canada really wants the Yakov, maybe because it's a legendary ship, but they're not getting it. Wow. I think the chance to succeed is pretty awful because my naval... No, my uh, <clears throat> army logi is so bad. <laughs> it's 23%. <laughs> so basically, uh, my army is so shit because I don't have a lot of logistics. <laughs> um, yeah, my navy power and my transport capacity are pretty bad. Navy power rating 61%. I'm very, very far behind. I think everybody else is average right now or advanced. Ritz, very. <laughs> yeah, lovely. So I can't even do an invasion properly by the looks of it. Um, and that's not even a, like a, a very important port or a very important territory. I'm not trying to invade Sardinia, right? It's just a colony. Oh, well. Let's see how it pans out, shall we? Well, pan out it did with control of Triplatana. So I now have a bit more territory. Which is nice. Is that going to really move the needle financially? No, not really. We're like, I don't know, gain two million a month from that, which sounds like a lot, but practically isn't. Now, is there any territory that I can take from the Italians? Uh, this is extremely well defended, being a core province. This similarly awful. No, no. So we're going to have to either hunt down <clears throat> more colonies like this, which apparently the Brits are on the move as well there. Um, maybe I can take Somaliland, or I can just go to peace. But if I go to peace, that means that I don't really get a whole lot of money, and my monthly balance is going to get even worse. So, as weird as it sounds, being at war with somebody all the time is actually beneficial. Simply because it boosts your budget. If I could take Sardinia, that's another million, a billion, <clears throat> a billion income. I don't get all of that, so it'd be a few million a month. But, yeah, I think there's not much more to take from the Italians. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep the war going, but for now, it might be a bit of a cold war, except for some occasional transport deaths. It didn't take long for another war to break out. We've seen these gentlemen before. Um, I think soon we won't be seeing them again because there won't be a Spanish empire left. The French have taken over most of Spain already. And I'm not sure if they're angling to try that again. But, um, well, there's not a whole lot of Spanish resistance left. So, the situation is this. This is Spain. This is it. Northern Spain. Period. That's all they got left. Um, yeah, okay, there might be some some colonies and shit, but their core territory is basically conquered by the French. And the French, <laughs> because of it, are making a killing. GDP of 384 million, which is still less than half of Britain. It's bizarre. I think the game needs balancing in that regard, but okay. Um, their economy is booming. They're doing very well. I think it's only a matter of time until the French decide that they want to raise an army in Western Spain um, or potentially Southern Spain or, I don't know, Western France and walk it casually into Northern Spain. I'm going to try and beat them to the punch. I'm going to try and get there first because I have this invasion fleet. Let's send it out to Northern Spain. Can we expect any resistance? No. Well, actually not bad. Three battleships, a battlecruiser. 
I'm just not sure where they are. And I might not be the first one to find them either. I am kind of worried about a situation developing in Asia, though. The British, my ally, are, well, picking fights left, right, and center. Uh, the French, the Germans, the Italians still, but also the Japanese. If they decide that they want to call me into this war, and they can, then I'm going to be at war with the Japanese again. Which is really not something that I want to do, but it's something that I might be kind of forced into unless I say no, at which point I break the relationship, I break up <clears throat> with my ally. It's not something I want to do. So the alternative is then uh, prepare reactivation of the Asian theater. The Japanese, they haven't been idle. They've been <laughs> building a lot of battleships. Um, yeah. Okay. That's going to be fun. Interestingly, they got no heavy cruisers. That is an interesting aspect and lack in their fleet. Now, research has been progressing very swiftly after I pumped a whole bunch of money into it. I'm going to wait for the boilers to come up. Although, that, nah, not really required. I'm going to be building a ship that lines up with the Admiral's um, directives, which is fight smart. We are not going to use just submarines. Don't worry, we're going to use a battlecruiser. We're going to be using the battlecruiser to its original purpose of um, outshoot what you can't outrun, i.e., let's say there's a destroyer. Um, outrun that. Outshoot what you cannot outrun. <coughs> So if you can easily run away from a battleship, by all means do so. If you cannot outrun the destroyer, you just kill the destroyer. It's probably not going to be quite that straightforward, but that is going to be the aim of this particular ship. Shoot and run. Shoot and scoot. Now, I haven't really seen a ship being used in uh, a convoy raid in a very long time. It does not mean it doesn't happen. Though. So that's something that I have to keep in mind. It is possible that I'm going to have to use this thing to raid Converse. Um, if it's... Well, if it comes up, fine. We will raid the Converse. I am going to need more funnels. Yeah, that looks legit. Okay, funnel capacity is good enough. Main guns, 13 inch. Big guns, lots of firepower, but also the ability to run away. Unfortunately, they look a little out of place here. But, well, they sit, so they fit. Secondary guns or side guns can be 13 inches if only. Um, is it possible to throw a barbette over here? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, yeah, we got our guns. We got our guns. These things are probably not even that heavy. It's 700 tons. So I can make a fairly straightforward ABXY battleship, battle cruiser, I think. Yeah, it's not that bad. The ship has a tendency to pitch up and down like crazy. That is something that I would like to see adjusted. So increasing the beam. No, sorry, that doesn't do that. Um, pitch is the ship going like this. <clears throat> I believe generally putting more armor on the deck can fix that. Yes. So maximizing deck armor can reduce the pitch. Which is nice, but it puts a ton of weight on this ship. A ton of weight. Anyway, I first want to go through secondary guns. Because this ship has these nice slots here for what are supposed to be side-mounted main guns. But I'm not going to use them as such. I'm going to use ideally a Mark III. But since I'm so far behind on research, the best Mark III that I have is a 4-inch gun. So that doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, this, against cruisers, especially a whole bunch of Japanese cruisers, can do a lot of work. So let's bring at least this. And then like maybe a couple of 4 inches on other spots. To augment the firepower of this ship. Can this sit here without it interfering? No. As for smaller guns, I don't think this ship has a whole bunch... Huh? <laughs> okay. So we can... <laughs> yeah. Cool. We can put the 2-incher on the 13-incher. 
I like it. Why not? I like it. Okay. Torpedoes. Mm, I don't think it's likely, because that would imply running at a battleship, which is something I'm not very eager to do. It's possible, but let's not, if we can avoid it. Um... Oh, hold on. You gotta put more weight on the core of the ship. Like the center the the, the center of mass should be in the middle of the ship. Okay, you're gonna get nine inches of deck armor just to <laughs> reduce the pitch. Because the pitch is not gonna do me any favors. Yeah, it's about minus seven percent base accuracy, so so be it. As for the rest, um let's give it nine inches of main belt armor, four inches for four inches aft. And then two inches of deck armor is fine. Let's give it all the superstructure armor. No, not quite that much. Like seven inches. And then when it comes to armor on the guns, I'm going to have these things heavily protected because I'm not interested in a flash fire. Top armor, four inches there. Barbettes, 19 inches. Oh, that's topped out. I'm not going to touch the gun's length nor diameter. I'm going to keep those as they are. Propellant type then. Um, flash fire chance currently 54%. 70. Holy shit. Let's get the barbettes installed, shall we? The chance of this thing exploding in your face is pretty bad. I'm not sure if there's a whole lot that I can do about that. I have to reduce weight somewhere. Go with a single bottom hull. And we're going to have to reduce some armor. Let's put 8 inches on the main deck. It's still going to make that pitch not great, but so be it. Um, adjust this, adjust this. Put the ship to 26 knots. Oh, it doesn't matter a whole lot. 27. We're going to have to reduce armor, I think. 3 inch, 3 inch. 2 inch superstructure. Now we're 250 over. I want that at 8. Main deck at 7. Core weight slightly. I think there's a whole lot I can shift back without increasing the size of the citadel. So we're going to have to get the weight from somewhere else. Oh, type of shell. Uh, Semi-armor piercing is fun. But against those very heavily armored Japanese battleships, I don't think it will work. Now, something somebody pointed out recently... Um, well, a few weeks ago by the time that you're watching this, is that you can look at a setting, settings menu, settings, general. Over here, you got armor quality in penetration data. What this means, as far as I understand it, if you put this to 100, it's going to uh, look at how much armor you can pen. So in this case, my ship has 100% armor quality which means I can, with this gun, at short wrist, short distances, like 5,000 meter range, slightly over, let's seven to seven and a half, I can pen this armor. Let's say the enemy is going to be already higher than that. Let's say 120% armor quality, which means that um, this stat over here, oh, sorry, my cursor isn't, available, uh, isn't even showing. Armor quality, bottom left-hand side of the screen, under generic armor, says 105%. For them, it might say 120. They got better armor quality. That means if they got like uh, 12 inches of armor there, I cannot pen that. I simply cannot pen that with this gun. So we're going to have to go to capped. And now we're getting some pretty decent chances to pen that armor. I think I don't need more than that. I would, well, I, yeah. There is something to be said for getting more than that. But at the moment, this is what we'll have to use. Uh, I'm going to have to reduce... We're 80 tons over. Can I do like 26 and a half? No. There really isn't that much that I want to save on. Superstructure armor. <clears throat> it's not great, but so be it. Um, the Rostov class. Well, I don't think so. Kuban class. The Kuban light cruiser has been extremely useful. Uh, by now, she's very old as well. So I think it's time that we're going to eventually retire Kuban and change her name, or have her name be carried over 
by this new battle cruiser class. It's going to take me a while to build these. I'm thinking, ideally, I'd have these operating, let's say, together without escorts, but that does make them susceptible to coming under fire from submarines, which, of course, is a very big risk here and not something I exactly want to try out. But you don't really get the opportunity in this game to really specify, hey, I want to have uh, these two ships fight this and this. It just does not work that way, unfortunately. Oh, look at that. We're pretty good. Money, of course, is going to flow out very quickly, so I'm going to have to reduce the research budget a bit in order to get those new ships out without breaking the bank. The invasion fleet that was originally headed to northern Spain turned out to be insufficient. Didn't have enough tonnage, which is fine. I will instead take the Canary Islands. And with that, I have actually a territory that's a lot more difficult to invade. So it is, um, well, it's a decent chunk of income. And I do gain this port, Santa Cruz, although it's, well, it's taken some hits, <laughs> shall we say, after my, dis my ships decided to do some shelling of it. But we have the port of Santa Cruz, which is a nice resupply point over here on the western side of Africa. I don't have any territory here, but I do now. The Italians are still very determined to make an offensive back into Tripolitana from Fezan Gadamis. So far, largely unsuccessfully. They've taken a lot of losses. They don't have a lot of friends, and I do. So we're going to hold on to this territory. Now, the situation with Japan has me concerned. Japan always keeps provoking. We're now at minus 70, and I think it's only going to get worse from here. So what is this going to mean? Well, we're going to have to get some new ships. We're going to have to reactivate the ships that are here. We might need to get additional submarines out here. And I can now build Coastal Sub 2. This has uh, two bow launchers, two stern launchers, and a two-inch gun. This only has a machine gun and two bow launchers. Price-wise, they're about double. Build time, not that difficult. So let's get a couple of submarines built. I might start scrapping a couple of the, let's say, the base ones, the, the tier ones, by the time that the tier twos come out. Something else I just got is a new scout cruiser hull, which is not there, apparently. Oh, right. I always see this as, like, consecutive, but it's not. You get the light cruiser thing. Here, scout cruiser. 10,000 tons, scout cruiser. So... I can now get a new light cruiser, which is a good thing, because my, my cruisers, my light cruisers are still from 1900. I have not built a new light cruiser, because all the Soviet hulls were pretty terrible. And thankfully, I now have options. Or at least I have a new option, which is <laughs> a lot more than I've had for a while. So these are the cruiser hulls that we've had. The light cruiser, the semi-armored, and then it goes to armored cruiser. This is the scout cruiser. Not very big, and that might be exactly what I need. Because with these, I can project power. And if I put some uh, sizable guns on them, I can project quite a lot of power. Unfortunately, the Mark 7s or the 7 inches that I have are only Mark 2. If I want to go to Mark 3, it's going to be the 4 inch gun. Which, well, that doesn't really do what I need it to do. Let's see, can I make these? Can I make them, like, really punch above their weight class, I wonder? Is that possible? Is that feasible? Here's my plan. Uh, pick a secondary tower that works. I want to have something that has 7-inch guns on a light cruiser so that I can use them to project power. And, again, further raid enemy commerce. Although, I have to be honest, I don't know if it actually does anything. And it's a really sad thing to say, but... The situation with the British is bizarre. They keep losing ship after ship after ship. Their transport capacity should be taking hit after hit. What ends up happening, their economy just keeps growing, keeps booming. It's like they don't even notice. Which is really weird. Is this any benefit? Oh, it has comms range. Yeah, but it don't fit. Or at least not very... Easily with that big crane that we... It doesn't look like we're getting a plane anyway. Can I at least put a gun on it? 
Ugh. Fine. I don't need comms range on a tower. We're going to go with the standard rear tower. There. Okay. Engine efficiency, not great. But then again, this is a cruiser that's going to be doing about 30 knots if I can run it that fast. So I guess it's going to be mostly engine with a couple of guns attached as almost an afterthought. Torpedo-wise, they don't have options. They got one underwater launcher, port side, starboard side, and that's it. No bow and stern. Yikes. <clears throat> Not great. Um, these turbines give me a 50% of top speed to achieve cruising speeds. So that is 15 knots. Which means that these guys can transit quite far. And that can be useful when you're trying to use them in a merchant raiding situation. Here we go. 16 knot cruising speed. And that is, um, I think, on the world map. Not sure. Anyway, I can put seven inches on this, which is bigger than some of the enemy heavy cruisers have had. Looks like we've also unlocked a couple of other barbettes, which is nice. I just need something that fits this. It does. Excellent. Okay. Pitch and roll are awful on this ship. If I change this to like halfway, the pitch and roll do change a bit, but so does the price tag. I'm trying to keep these fairly small. I think these guns are not exactly what I need for this ship. Let's go for five inches and maybe upscale them to five nines. Um, can we put like... I don't know. Rapid fire two inches on the side. You can't? What's this for then? Oh, you're not supposed to put this many... <laughs> you're not supposed to put this many funnels on. What are you rated for? 29 knots? Right. I guess I just don't have the engine to run this thing yet. Um, okay. Let's get some better engine or energy distribution on the ship. Armor distribution, weight distribution, and it's still awful. Oh, by the way, I've unlocked a hydrophone. I can now, <laughs> I can now find a submarine. I still can attack it, but hey, I can find it. So progress. Um, what's this going to do for my suicide chance? Nine and a half, but that's with two guns. <clears throat> Not sticks at nine and a half. Okay. So secondary guns. To deal with DDs. Oof. Not sure I like that. What about making these mixed armament? What if I put the 7-incher on here and on there? That should bring the weight distribution closer to the core of the ship. And thereby limiting the pitch and the roll. You'd think, but pitch is going worse, not better. Hmm. Okay. That's unfortunate. Rangefinder. And now I have stereoscopics, but with the, sh the way the ship's going to be handling, I'm going to go with Quinston's rangefinders. I still have pen problems, potentially. Yeah, so I can pen about three inches of armor with that gun. That's not a lot. Go for capitalistic. Have this thing punch far harder than you might think. At five inches of armor pen. So this should be able to pen a superstructure. Nose fuse in case I can't pen that. Let's say normal distribution. I'll take a radio. And the rest of it's going to go into armor. Two inch superstructure. I will take an okay amount of deck armor to try and push that pitch down. Let's say two inch there. Two inch there. Two inch there. Nope. Oh, these things are paper ships. Like a one-inch belt. How do you expect me not to die with a one-inch belt? I'm going to have to really carefully use these ships. Either at range. Or, I don't know, as a sort of hit-and-run ship. Because anything else. And they have, I think, a pretty high chance of blowing up. They'll either flash fire. Or they'll be struck by something that floods them out. Neither is particularly appealing. Do I want mine lane capability? It's 50 tons. It's 50 tons I don't have, really. Uh, let's put this on like 
8 inches. And then the barbette at 5. 5.2 five, is fine. Make that 2 inch there. 2 inch there. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Engine efficiency, okay. Pitch and roll are okay. They're not great. But I think that for what the ship is supposed to do, which is be a cheap raider uh, next to potentially the Kuban class, these guys would be great escorts. These hit everything very hard with the 13 inchers. These take care of smaller threats. That's the plan. Okay, um, let's save them. Let's get a few of these guys built. So how long will that take? 10 months. That's not too bad. Let's get four of these guys built. Uh, there goes the money. <laughs> Holy moly. Sorry, research. You're going to have to take a backseat again. Because this is hardly something I can keep up for a long time. Um, do I want to continue to war with Spain? Not really. I think Spain doesn't have any good territory left. I think everything that Spain used to have has been gobbled up by somebody else. Well, Mallorca. Balearic Islands. It's a very small place, financially seen. So it's not that valuable, but it could be useful. So let's take the fleet over there. Potentially take out some more ships that happen to come in the way. And then... Ah, there's the, there's the Spanish fleet. Uh-huh. Okay, they might have some fight left. But that's something we'll see in a future episode. Hope you guys enjoyed the new ships. Let me know what your designs opinions are. And I'll see you soon for more videos.